even respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> he did it for me, not for you. <laughs> I'll remember that. Yeah. <laughs> This is interesting. But Matt, what? Matt this, was going this, to give me this. This is what chairs. happens. This could go any direction. Yeah. I know, it can. Yeah, it but really this is what direction. happens between the, t- the two of us. I think so. Bill yeah. does that on purpose to get something started. Well, he no, said he was, I was going just to. Being nice. Uh, well, yeah. nice to her. Yeah. Stick at the man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? But the last time I was on, all of you guys ganged up on me. So maybe it's time to turn the tables just a little bit. You you did get it a little bit. I last did. Time. Matter of fact, I last did. two times. Yeah, it was a pleasure. But, <laughs> yeah. See. But, yeah, but noticed, yeah. <laughs> so this time, I, I I'm getting a little bit of that nice that niceness that you got last time. Ja- Jackie, times. you got the sharp elbows there. And I have a, I can have my moments. <laughs> <laughs> Usually at board meetings, we have Dr. Sachs, though, in between us. Yeah. So, you know. He will be in tomorrow, by the way, on the schedule, Dr. Sachs is uh, to appear. Uh, Matt Miller here, co-hosting as well on uh, this beautiful Tuesday. Had you been forgotten, Matt? You no, no, no. I was, out altogether? I was just thinking I should have heard the chicken dance song and then turned off quickly as we played the, the musical chairs musical there chairs, earlier yeah. and then turn it back on and, and keep See, moving. See, history so. says it has to be turtles. Turtles? Turtles. There's okay. a big story behind turtles between um, Rob and, and Bill over here. So it's got to be turtles. Right. Not, Terrible. Not, not chickens. Well, I, well, because the entire show, they didn't ask Melissa any questions. <laughs> they just talked about turtles. <laughs> <laughs> Just, hey, you know. Rob, have you felt you've lost control of the yeah. segment? <laughs> I'm just observing. I'm just a casual observer. You know? Casual? Casual. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure I would have ever described you as casual. No? No. No? No. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even going there. But. Yeah. Uh, you folks had a meeting last night. What were some of the major items you were attempting to uh, address? Jackie, you're the president. Um, you go first to pull rank here. Trying to think what our agenda. Can. We caught. We talked about our bond um, projects. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about. Uh, we had some monitoring issues. I can't mm-hmm. remember. What well, we did actually have uh, one major uh, decision that we did do yesterday. Uh, we were able to uh, look at the bid for Hedgesville. Learning, Aca- Learning Academy, correct? Is that the... Yeah, that's what that's it's going to be name. called now, Hedgesville Learning and, Academy. And what is that? Uh, it's the pre-K center uh, uh, that will be located right um, where the BOAG... Corner, corner, the, the of, corner of Ridge, Ridge and, Road. Ridge Road and Hedgesville. Mm-hmm. Okay. The, it's, it's beautiful. So the, the, uh, the, bond, the bid came in at $11,648,000 six hundred and forty eight thousand some odd dollars which was four million lower than expected well, that's good yes yeah that's yes. great yeah did they and cut out a roof or something or, or what no uh, just con- no convertible school i guess maybe costs are going down i don't know i i think i i think when you look at some of the some of the items that that one one of the things that we had we had originally looked at at the bond and um we had to end up adjusting a little bit was you know the original plan was i believe to have uh, what was it 12 uh classrooms well we were going to have and eight classrooms and then but it, now we, had we to reduce can to eight now but, if we're going to look yes. at going back to maybe what we've saved uh putting four more classrooms on there but we're going to yeah. wait to see how um the th- everything with the other Bond. Is this school building authority money, or is this separate, a different bond? It's, it's bond, all it's bond, bond money. It's not. It, no, it's, it's not, not school building. No, school building okay. author, uh, authority money will go to the new school in Falling mm-hmm. Waters. Gotcha. So if yeah. you had fifteen, it comes in at eleven. Yep. You've yeah. got the bond. Mm-hmm. Is the bond about twelve? Uh, twelve. Just, okay. ju- just under. Just, just, uh, just under. under. Three million dollar difference. So yes. It, so it, it is the bond structured as such Mm -hmm. that the money could only be used for this structure or if you save three million can you then move that money somewhere else everything that was listed in the bond itself when voters had the chance to vote on it so if we had um if we were able to save three million dollars here we can take that three million dollars and apply it to another project that was listed on that same bond call Okay. So we and were able to same way with any project. Yes, yeah. correct. And what are some of the other projects that you might put the money into? We've got the 
um, we've got Falling Waters Elementary that's going to be built. We on have uh, part the, the PK Center in Inwood. Mm -hmm. um, are any of those funded yet? Are they? Are they started? The PK yet? Center in Inwood. No, it's not. No, falling, because you mentioned Falling Waters too. So uh, all of this is through the bond and through the SBA money that we've received. So the funding is there. We just have to work through the architecture, um, the all of the different pre preliminary work that that needs to be done mm -hmm. and and then bid out. So. so the 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 three million you're saving, you had cut the classrooms from twelve to eight. eight. No, now, we didn't cut them. We can add them. Because it's because you came in three million under. Yes, we can add that. Right. Is the population growth there such that it would make more sense to build twelve as opposed to having to then go back and try to add on with more costs later at a presumably higher cost? Well, that's something we're going to discuss. Yeah, but we, we don't have all the numbers yet. That's something that we're going to be getting soon. The idea is that the the possibility is that there will be some cost savings with that because of. Um, some of the equipment is still there. They, they would be able to just go ahead and immediately implement it in versus, you know, d bringing everything back later. Mm -hmm. um, but we have to find out what that cost looks like. So we can't, we're not going right. to, they're going to wait till they're going to wait till they figure okay. out what that looks like. You have to rebid it out if you no. decide to ask Ed for? No. no. Okay. They can just give you a quote. Yes. Mm -hmm. How, and do you anticipate you'll be asking for that? Or does that have to go We've through? already asked for it. We've already asked. And do you have a, a day when they suspect they will get back with that number? I don't know that. You can, might ask Dr. Sachs that tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bill, you'll be here tomorrow. Let's make a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'm taking notes right now, Coach. <laughs> Bill's our recording secretary. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, that, that site at Hedgesville, I'm seeing it in my mind. Is this a, a completely new building that will be built? Will yes, the VOAG yes. building still be there, or is that being removed and no, a new building put in? There. So it'll it, still be there. All right. The building itself is beautiful. It looks like a uh, one of the smaller elementary schools. Right. Yeah, we actually think, got a anyway. fly through. We actually had like a little, a little simulated fly through, fly through. Mm -hmm. of the building, and it looks amazing the way that the, the architecture firm was able to, to put that together for us to see. And I believe, and I correct me if I'm wrong, I think they're going to be posting that. I don't know if they've done that already. That's a question it tomorrow. Could be, it Go could ahead, be on. Bill, and ask Dr. Sachs okay. tomorrow. <laughs> now, she, now she's giving you order, Miss Bill. <laughs> Yes, it could be yes, on the website today. It could be, yeah. yeah I think, yeah. I, as far as I remember, from what I remember, I think it was so going to be on the website today. There's at least three pre-K pre schools that have been built. Two. 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 I thought I heard one. One. You in, mean are being built? Or uh, will be built, or plan to be? I hope Inwood. To be built. Inwood. Inwood, and then at Hedgesville. Hedgesville. Okay. Then there's Falling Waters. That Falling Waters is going to be an elementary school. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does it replace Marlowe or just simply give you more classrooms in Marlo that end of the county? Marlowe is to be a pre-K center. Marlowe will so become a pre-K pre center, center. Okay. but yes. it's, so it's, yes, replace, but not, it's, not, not, it's just reallocating. Yeah. Right. Now, what's the, uh, what's the criteria for making the determination of where the schools will be built? Is it strictly based on population or is it the age of the older structure, infrastructure? What, what? are the considerations well I, I think we felt like it was where the population growth was mm -hmm. and where what we expected the population growth you know we had a study done um, from Preston Smith company that gave us some insight uh, really big insight on where, what our where our population growth would be and numbers and and we're getting ready to do another one uh, that w that one was presented to the board in 2020, but you know we have grown so fast here mm -hmm. that um, you know our numbers will exceed what uh, that study said. I'm sure. Yeah, uh, but the growth has not been even throughout. Uh, for a while, Inwood was a target for the most rapid growth. It right. appears now to be the, the Fallen Waters of Beddington area. Well, uh, Hedgesville has too. That was my question. Hedgesville yes. is the same, same level. And, and also, while I don't, so I don't lose this That's thought, um, you know, we put schools where population is, but it doesn't mean that students won't be just because you live closer to say Tuscarora that you might not your child might not go to the other the other thing is there's several different developments that are actually going in um one of which um applewood 
that um, was Somebody recently taken up. No, not yeah, in Hedgesville. No, that's all. Applewood is actually off uh, App, Apple Exit Harvest, 12. Exit 12, yeah. Apple Harvest, yeah. okay. um, on the other side um, next to uh, the community college. So um, there's a big development that's that's going to be probably rolling into that area. So I mean, How many homes, Jackie? I mean, no, most of them. So oh, 700 yeah. plus. 700 townhouses, homes. Um, villas. Villas. And apartments and then there's mm. more um yeah. is that all martinsburg high school area right now yes so it would be martinsburg high school south uh martinsburg middle rosemont and do you have room in those OBI. schools right now no no what percentage of capacity are you at we're those over. We're over we're, at we're over capacity in every school over plus. over over and we do our best to um, I don't want to say move them, move around, but you know you can only take so many students in that school to where you're b beyond capacity, and then you have to send those students when, elsewhere out of their community, which isn't pleasant. When a new development is proposed, is the school board or the superintendent contacted to ask the question of do we have room for students in um, school? They notify us with an FYI um, that there's this possibility of a, a new um, neighborhood are we asked our opinion no can we provide it yes um, does that carry any weight we'll see Is well there... and we had that conversation yesterday because yeah. with the planning commission because it, was, it has been all yeah. of our understanding that that was just a heads up here's what's coming um, and and they we give them the student well they there's a concept to how they figure out student population so mm -hmm. they send that back to us and we did not realize okay we need to send in how this affects us we had no idea that that right was expected is there a mechanism in place that permits should a developer want to and i don't regard developers as evil people are moving here because right. they want to live here right. they got to have a house right but is there a mechanism in place that permits an assessment to a builder who builds in an area where the schools are already over capacity to kick a certain amount of money into a school building fund. No, nothing's we discussed required. that yesterday. Yeah, nothing's required no. of them. So they're not necessarily needing to do that versus in other places like in Frederick County, Maryland, that is required. Correct. Um, yeah. That is not required here in Berkeley County. So that is something that we did discuss yesterday. I will say that yesterday's meeting was very productive. Yes. Um, and I'm hopeful by it. Um, that's where we were able to get an understanding that we can actually provide feedback to them and, and give them information that they might not be aware of. And we can use some of the information that they're providing to us to to um, at least be mindful. I don't know that we can completely plan everything to the nth degree because we don't know exactly how many students will be, you know, sure. in a new community two years down the road. I don't think anybody can, but it would give us awareness. Do you generally project it at like 2.1 per house? Is that the, uh, the mathematical I think formula? It was four. Four children per house? Point. It was point, point there there's a point there's four. a it was point point 0.2 uh, yeah and then I it was see. point 2 I don't have that I, I was going to say it, I don't me, either but, I, gotcha. but Mr. Murphy uh, Mr. Murphy Pat Murphy went to the, in front of the planning commission 2 years ago or maybe last year and and asked them to up that um, allowance per household because it has it, significantly changed it, it definitely was not what it should be well, I think and the, they did do that the, and, the well, impact fees that have been passed by the legislature for berkeley mm -hmm. county yep. hopefully will allow for some of that to take place that if you're building in a school district we impact fees need to be assessed and some of that needs to go towards school building well uh, and we're i know the, that the uh, county commission is mm -hmm. working on who gets what and what percentage so well i uh, hope you have addressed the fact that schools will need to be built and we can't keep going we to the well, state we've discussed that we stressed, we stressed. Yes. <laughs> good william or matt or i was just going to ask as far as the high school level and we talk about our schools already being filled where are we in a plan for another high school in the county how far along is that process we have 150 acres on on georgetown road um sawmill road Mm -hmm. I yeah. Think so yeah. But uh, as far as drawings, a concept. No, the... that's that's um, in the five-year plan. That's not. But you know, the way things are going now, we don't know 
when we will be able to start that. It could be sooner. However, you know, with all of us, uh, 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 you, you, we got to pass another bond. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, in, that, in, yeah. in West Virginia, you have to reach out to the taxpayers mm -hmm. and uh, but hearing what we're talking about now, even yeah. by the time another five years rolls around, you build that new school and it's already full and we're looking for so, something else. There'll be another middle school there also. One of the okay. other things that's a little bit difficult is that we, when we have the Preston, Preston Smith, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm bad with names, so it could be Smith Preston, and I'm yeah, and Preston I would think Smith. it would be the same. Um, so it's Preston Smith. So when we have that study, we have to utilize that study in order to um, have any sort of foundation when we are looking to propose a bond um, and look for for building. We can't just look at it and go, oh, well, if it's going to be 800 kids in this school, well, maybe what we should do is really plan for a thousand. We can't do that. We have to go with what is in that what is in that study. Well, not, not we've never that was the first study we've had for years yes. so uh, before we it was just prediction on um what information that uh, they had before and it, you know it was pretty accurate and we always overbuild built to what the sba will allow you they yes, only correct. allow you to build to a certain capacity correct for us in other counties that's probably works perfect in berkeley county that doesn't work because doesn't. just as soon as we get a school built we are over capacity and i almost feel like as soon as we get the study that they give to us it's almost like <laughs> yeah, we need another give, it, give it another month and it's going to be obsolete yeah. because of how much is happening and that's not that's not to anybody's necessarily fault or detriment the only snag is is that we're we're the ones left kind of holding the bag going we're trying as best we can and it always seems to be like we're it's just reactionary instead of you know being proactive but i don't know how else to get beyond that when we feel so far behind it took us a you know a very short time to get here but it's going to take us a long time to get out yeah of it. very what, short time. what is the distribution formula that the sba uses for distributing dollars uh we're obviously at the uh the pinnacle of the growth in the state uh, there's other parts mm. of the state are not growing at all is the traditional funding distribution remain constant with SBA, or do you know? Uh, well, you know they only get so much money from the from the legislature, and but, and but they get an X amount of money. They yeah, eighty million they, they got, the or sixty million this time. I think time. it's going back down though to the original amount. Yeah, what well, was down to sixty million? That's not a lot so, of money when no. the need is so great in this state. And even though counties are small, uh, those those counties still need new schools because they are very old and dilapidated and but some counties are closing schools whereas the need mm -hmm. in Berkeley County we need more schools now SBA knows that so for us to get 25 million from uh, that was a large chunk of that yes. money that they distributed yes. we were very thankful very, very so they only have 60 million dollars or roughly they work with that, that was the it changes all the time i understand that Jackie. yeah but, I understand past, that. but around yes for an average around six million and last year we got approximately 25 million dollars yeah. mm -hmm. so and that is a sizable portion it, of that. it is a sizable yeah. portion and you have to remember there's 55 counties and then there's there's counties that they've they uh, needed to either consolidate um and in order to do the consolidation because you have two schools that yeah so we, spaced out apart mm -hmm. you have to create a school that's in the middle so that's well, the, they're lo they're losing student population is mm -hmm. the problem yeah. and it's more money to spend for their school district to keep those schools open for just a a, a few students so i mean they're that's their reality and they need money as well as what we do so it's they uh, there's probably a formula that they utilize what that formula is i don't yeah, know Sandy but on, on the surface it seems like that the sba is woefully underfunded to meet yes. the needs of definitely. the state as a yes. whole. Yes, definitely. And that goes back underfunded. to the legislators Correct. and the amount of money the legislators Correct. provide to the SBA. Yeah. Okay. Bill? Mike Hyde, are you listening? And Mike Hyde actually <laughs> has chimed in a couple <laughs> times in the comments section. He said the impact fees kick in in January. Yeah. That should uh, provide I've a little bit so of relief. I've heard so many yeah, different. 20, 2025, heard, they told us. Yeah, That's but I've, January, heard, right? I've heard June. Yeah. I've heard July. I've heard January. I've heard all these J months. What, can you figure out which J month it is? We're out of J yeah. months. Yeah. January, July, June. I June know. and July are gone. So oh, there's January. I didn't hear any J months. I just heard 2025. 
Jackie yeah. J. Yeah. But yeah. you know what? I I I, I take Facebook take with it. a grain of salt. I just know that it's coming in 2025. Well, yeah. Mike is a delegate. And, and he would know. He would know. He so would. he said January. He so ask 25. him since he's listening to work on increasing the funding for the SBA. I believe yes. he has heard you loud and clear. Please, 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 Mike. Please. Yeah. I believe he has. Pretty, Do you? Pretty, when please. is the next time you folks meet with members of the House of Delegates from this uh, Eastern Panhandle delegation? What, in November? Yeah, around November. Uh, I think this year we were going to try to meet in October. Um, to get our list in early, our Christmas list. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I assume school building funds will be on that list again this year. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, a uh, fifth high school in Berkeley County. What's our timeline on that? Well, I, don't, I think it was. <laughs> it'll be a, a bit. It'll be the next bond call. It'll be in the next bond. So, we when we were looking at the last bond, we were looking at the growth that we were having with pre-k and we were looking at the growth that we had in in the elementary schools and we knew that that was something that we needed to address um immediately and the next one is is where we're going to be concentrating on the secondary so we would have loved to fund have funded all of our yeah. all the needs and it was around uh, maybe damon's listening 350 million i think damon just had to cut out for a meeting oh. <laughs> <laughs> but i mean Welcome we knew that would never pass that's what so, he said you know, so how much was in the last bond 125, 125 and then we got 25 and you felt it should be around 350 well that's the what that's the needs if yeah. if you're looking at a uh we need a new school in Hedgesville Middle. We mm -hmm. need a new. We need a high school and uh, up on where the 50, 150 acres we bought. We need a new middle school there, yeah. uh, and there's going to be a Mountain Ridge Primary. As um, as member of the school board, I realize there's a lot of uncertainties, and we've talked about a couple of them right now. What will pass with the with the school bond, and how much will the SBA provide? I realize there's uncertainties, but in your thought process, what percent? Do you anticipate you're going to have to raise internally as opposed to asking from the state percentage wise you mean what what do you think we would have to go to the yes taxpayers when you for? have these dreams of what oh, are not golly. dreams when you realize how much you need and you've said three hundred fifty thousand three hundred fifty million dollars of that We've already funded 125. 125 and plus you fund another 25 to the SBA. SBA. I, I mean, we realistically, <laughs> and Melissa will back me, I hope, mm -hmm. that uh, we have to. You know, we, I, yeah, yeah, we it's have to sit down as a whole, as a group, and and figure out what we think the taxpayers will be, can afford and are willing to pay. You have and, not done that. Uh, not we, for we, the next bond. Not, not for the next. next bond. Not, okay, not, yeah. not for the next bond. Okay, yeah. uh, that was, it, and I'm going to go back to one of the very first meetings that we had together uh, back in 2022 um, we were we started soon after we took oath we um, we started in with with conversations about the bond um, and because of the construction background I had I looked at the projects and I looked at the money that that they stated we would need to have in order to fund it and I knew immediately it was the wrong number um, I spoke up about it and I I there was pushback from um, a couple people saying that it really probably wasn't that far off. And I pushed back a lot because of what I saw in the construction industry. And I'm glad I did because it, they went back and, and they started looking at it and the price increase was um, right at what I had said, I had said that it was going to need to be increased to. We knew immediately that that wasn't going to work. For, for our citizens, we knew that that was going to be too way too much. We needed to um, be more realistic with it, and that's something that we'll continue to do, you know, with the next one. And well, thank we you knew, both. and we knew cost was going rising and rising. And and real quickly though, one of our bonds will be paid off um, May, May of 2025. Yeah, so we'll all have only one bond. I am out of time, Bill. I'm sorry, that thought <laughs> no. cannot be expressed. We have to get to the break. This it's uh, thank you both. It's nine o'clock. This is Talk Radio WRNR Martinsburg TV 10. Back with more.